U.S. yields continue to fall. The U.S. dollar weakens as expectations that the Fed will start cutting the interest rates by 50 basis points, gain traction as the Fed prepares to start its two-day monetary policy meeting today. So gold consolidates near all-time high levels, while crude oil and silver will actually love the idea of a bigger rate cut. So welcome to Swiss Coast. Daily Market Talk is Tuesday, 17th of September. Oh, the market is tense, the wait is long, and the suspense is killing everyone before the Federal Reserve's next monetary policy decision and economic projections and the dot plot that are all due to come in, well, not earlier than tomorrow. The wait is long. Now, either the Fed those are going seriously ahead of themselves, maybe by boredom, I don't know. Or there will be a big, big disappointment when the Federal Reserve will announce its policy decision tomorrow. Or, or the other option is the Fed will align with the market expectations and give investors what they want, a 50 basis point cut, to avoid creating further panic. We will see. But the expectation of a 50 basis point cut is now assessed nearly 70% chance. So the US two-year yield further died below the 3.53% level yesterday. The US 10-year yield is hanging around 3.62% level this morning. And the US dollar index remains under a decent, decent selling pressure before the decision, much intimidated by the rising bets for a 50 basis point cut from the Federal Reserve at tomorrow's decision. The reality is that no one, but no one knows what the Fed will do tomorrow. And well, it's been a while that we haven't seen such uncertainty while walking into a Federal Reserve's monetary policy decision. Normally, the Fed likes to prepare the market and investors toward a decision and well, delivers what is expected. Now, I still firmly believe that a 25 basis point cut would be the best option for the Fed for tomorrow due to unalarming economic figures of the moment. It is, in my opinion, better to start slow and accelerate if needed. But I am also increasingly confused as many out there and think that a disappointment would be so massive that the Fed may maybe just not there given the market just a 25 basis point cut. And we also start hearing that some Democrats are putting fuel to the fire asking for a 75 basis point cut from the Fed, of course, because that would be a perfect boost to the economy and to people's pockets just before November's presidential election, with, however, the risk of boosting inflation yet again. But, but politicians probably prefer seeing people happy for the next two months than confused. And then we will see what happens next. So happily, happily, the Fed is independent. So it is in this atmosphere of high confusion and uncertainty that the Fed will start its two-day monetary policy meeting today. And we will see how it goes. But let me tell you this. If the economic data doesn't show enough weakness after a potential 50 basis point cut today from the Fed, then the Fed may have to stop and rethink. And well, that would be really, really bad for the markets and for sentiment. Just saying. Now, the good news is that the Fed confusion doesn't really derail the S&P 500 stocks from their upper trajectory. The index closed yesterday slightly higher, a few points below its all-time high level, which absolutely doesn't show any necessity whatsoever for a 50 basis point cut, by the way. And better news is that the equal weight index for the S&P 500 is also catching up with the normal weighted technology heavy index as the rate cut bets for the Fed fuel the rotation trade where investors move their money from technology to non-technology pockets of the market. And the Dow Jones Industrial Index hit a fresh record high yesterday, another place where we see no emergency at all for a 50 basis point cut and small caps are also trading near their post-pandemic high levels. Again, here as well, you can see that there is no emergency for a 50 basis point cut whatsoever. 
and the FX and commodities. The US dollar's weakness makes the others look strong because the euro dollar, for example, spiked above the 111 mark yesterday and cable trades just at the 1.32 level this morning. Then US crude drilled through the $70 per barrel offers yesterday and is consolidating timidly above this level this morning. Now, the idea that the Fed could deliver a 50 basis point cut tomorrow is appreciated among the oil bulls, who are apparently convinced that the things are not going well enough anyway, and that, well, maybe, but just maybe, a 50 basis point cut well, could help boost demand prospects. But a 50 basis point cut, on the other hand, could also backfire, mind you, by giving the ones that call for recession reason. So I still well, believe that the 70 to 72 dollar per barrel range well, could be hard to drill. In precious metals, while well, gold consolidates gains near its all-time high levels right now, benefiting both from a soft US dollar across the board, the falling US treasury yields, and uh, of course a certain flight to safety on confusion and on uncertainty about what the Fed will deliver tomorrow. Silver, on the other hand, is actually loving the idea of a larger interest rate cut from the Fed. Well, more than gold does, actually, because that's because silver, well, silver has a much higher proportion of industrial use than gold. It is used in electronics, in solar panels, and in other technologies. And when interest rates are cut, well, it generally signals an effort to stimulate economic growth, which obviously boosts industrial activity and appetite for well, industrial matters. And the latter increases the demand for silver due to its widespread industrial applications. As such, well, the price of an ounce of silver jumped more than 10% since last week. And it jumped more than 15% since the beginning of August, when the 50 basis point cut well, best started to emerge. And the mint ratio, which is the ratio of gold to silver, is diving back toward the 60 to 80 average range and has room for what well, further fall with the upcoming rate cuts, no matter the size. Now, before I go, let's also have a look to the individual news space. Nvidia was down by almost 2% at yesterday's trading session, but Intel jumped more than 6% yesterday, and that was on news that it sealed a deal with Amazon's AWS. Because according to the news, the company, so Amazon and Intel, will co-invest in a custom semiconductor for AI computing. <laughs> Intel also confirmed yesterday that it will well separate its foundry business from the rest to unlock its external foundry business potential by giving its customers a better view or a better image of independence for its foundry unit. The news please investors for once, so let's see if Intel could rebound on the new plan. Now, I think that there is actually a chance for Intel to do better because NVIDIA, for example, doesn't lose its time building its chips. It focuses on designing them and on building a platform, for example, an ecosystem to offer the best AI solutions to companies. Then, well, TSM builds the chips for NVIDIA. So that's a good model. And moving to a similar model for Intel could also help Intel who focus on the essential and also grow its foundry business at a time when many, many out there like Amazon are actually willing to well, build their own chips. Plus, a cherry on top, Intel also has the US government's backing. We are talking about a 3 billion US dollar package from the US government for well, manufacturing chips for its military. So that's it really. We will see how Intel will do in the future. Time will tell. But this is all for today. I'm Ipeko Skardeshkoy and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. Follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please, please don't forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading.